Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea. They've been moving mad recently. Like, this is a club that spent excess of 250 million pounds in the last transfer window. Just the summer, six months ago, or less than six months ago, they spent in excess of 250 million pounds on Cucurella, Fafana, Koulibaly, Sterling, and, eight, and one or two youngsters. And yeah, they're trying to actually uh, spend in excess of hundred million pounds on Enzo Enzo Fernandez, who had a decent World Cup. He was a young player of the World Cup. Shout out to him. But this guy is barely settled in Benfica. Like Benfica bought him, I think a year plus ago from River Plate. He's barely played two seasons with uh Benfica, and Chelsea comes and they want to get. I think that's a bit disrespectful. And what do you expect? You think uh. The guys at Benfica will just surrender and give him to Chelsea because Chelsea is a bigger club. No, you have to pay. Yes, see this. <laughs> What's the right word? This fake confidence that Todd Bowley has been exuding is senseless, right? It's very senseless. Now, if Chelsea were as bold as they claim and they have the kind of money they are claiming to have, well, why don't you just pay the release clause and stop negotiating with Benfica? Barely, see, if you pay the release clause, you get a player. Sub negotiate this higher fee I can pay in installment. Absolute bollocks. Because if you can come with your audacity to get a player who has barely settled in Benfica because they had a decent World Cup, you just have to have your audacity to pay the money. And they don't have it. So you make matters work. Even within negotiation with Benfica to try and get a favorable price, which I think they won't get, you still have your audacity to, to try and want to hijack a deal on the side. Modric to Arsenal. Like, this is crazy. How can you be asking for a favorable price and reduced price with Benfica? Yet, you see how the audacity, you have the time and you have the money for another deal on the side. Like, see, Todd Bowley is a scattergunned owner with a scattergunned approach. He, he thinks he's playing football manager. No, this is real life. Like, Somebody needs to pull him to the side and talk to him. Like, a player gets links to Arsenal, gets links to Barca, gets links to Manchester United or Manchester City. Is it, suddenly he's interested. I thought uh, the talk was that after he gets in football people into the building, he will actually backpedal, he will relax and let, let the football uh, guys do the decision making and make the moves. No, he's still involved. I know he brought in... Uh, uh, Graham Potter from Brighton. I brought in a few football guys from that place. He has employed uh, the guy from what of that club. He got uh, the the I think the technical di director or sporting director from. Ah, suddenly, I'm having a brain freeze. He got it from where? He I know Chelsea got, uh, actually got a sporting director or a football director from a particular club. Yeah, Todd Bowley is still keenly involved in making uh sporting decisions for, for Chelsea. He should be he should be making financial decisions. No, I won't I won't, I won't even agree to financial financial decisions. It should just be getting explanations from those who are more uh educated in terms of the football decisions and in terms of football finances, then he can just sign the checks and get some piece of explanation. But he's still keenly involved. So I'm kind of gloating. I'm, I'm I'm happy that the Enzo Fernandez deal was on the verge of a collapse because this is nonsensical. You cannot continue to drive up prices for your rivals because that's what he's doing with the Modric deal. Like, he is one encouraging Shatterton to hold up for a higher price, in my opinion. Like, stop it. Stop it. Like, this Catagon approach, trying to buy every single player your rivals are linked to it, is it's just really, you're sure that there is no plan. There is no blueprint to what you're trying to do. They are just interested. Oh, Baka wants that player. Oh, I think we, we should get him too. Like, that, how, how how sustainable is that approach? How sustainable is that approach? And how is that how sustainable is the approach of overpaying for players? Like, you overpaid for Kai Hava, even though it was doing the Roman Abramovich uh, dispensation. There are so many players in Chelsea squad that are not the right fit that they were paid for. And yet, he hasn't learned his lesson. He hasn't learned his lesson. How can you? Want to pay in excess of 100 million pounds for a young midfielder that is not guaranteed to succeed, in my opinion. Now, the fact that he played well at the World Cup, the English Premier League is a different beast, in my opinion. Like, he is barely settling at Benfica in Portugal, then you want to move him to English Premier League. I'm not saying he will not succeed, 
but the odds are not too high that he will succeed immediately. It might take it might take a while. And the Chelsea midfield map, you know, needs a total revamp and signing one player for the next 100 million pounds does not provide the adequate solution. In my opinion, it does not. So Chelsea fans can continue this nonsense of pushing this narrative that oh Todd Bowley is trying to bring glory back to their, to their club. On the surface level, it looks like that. But if you look at it with critical thinking, this kind of scattered gun approach is not sustainable. This kind of uh picking on or your rival target is not the right approach to build something sustainable. And why can't you just let this decision be made by football people at Chelsea? Why is it so keenly involved? I'm talking about Todd Bowley. Why is it so keenly involved in making football decisions for the, for the club? I know he provides the, the finances. I know he's a co-owner or the majority shareholder or the owner. But at the same time, this is his first road year at football. And he could just mess a lot of things up. He will mess a lot of things up. If you think I'm chatting bullshit, let me know in the comment section. Do you think this approach by Todd Bowley buying all and, all, all and sundry is the right approach? Or, you think, or do you think he should let the decision of running the club be made by football people or sporting people. Let me know in the comment section. And if you like my content, do me a favor. Make sure you stick a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe. <clears throat> I'm sorry, if you're not yet subscribed. And do not forget to turn your notification bells on. And I'll see you guys on the next one.